Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. And uh, today I'm back with uh, oral pathology series. And today's topic is going to be odontogenic tumors. So I'm going to be discussing all of these tumors from the exam point of view. I've not covered all the tumors, but these tumors are very, very important to be covered. Okay. So I'm going to be talking about amyloblastoma, calcifying epithelial odontogenic tumor, cementosious dysplasia, adenomatoid odontogenic tumor, odontoma, um, we'll be covering complex and compound and cementoblastoma. Okay. So the first tumor that we're going to be discussing it's, is amyloblastoma. This is a very, very important tumor to be covered um, because it's the most commonly occurring tumor in the oral cavity from odont most common odontogenic tumor. Okay, So the origin for this tumor would be odontogenic epithelium. Okay, um, Three M's needs to be remembered for this tumor. It is most common most aggressive and it usually occurs in the mandibular posterior region usually in the mandibular ramus area okay so this tumor is usually a painless slow growing swelling um, it expands the bone buccolingually you need to remember all of these things all of these things can be a, a multiple choice question and um, there are three types of amyloblastoma one uh, is the most common type which is called as the solid or multicystic and second would be the unicystic which occurs as a single cyst that is 15 percent and third would be peripheral which means it occurs in the gingiva and the oral mucosa so the radiographically this amyloblastoma appears uh, when it occurs as a multicystic amyloblastoma you you can see too many cysts and this type of appearance, which is seen in this particular radiograph, is called a soap bubble. Like, you know, too many soap bubbles or a honeycomb appearance. Okay, this is again very important. So the treatment for this type of tumor would be um, marsupialization, which means uh, removal of 90% of the tumor and uh, not involving the major structures like nerve, artery or vein or enucleation. Enucleation means, which means complete removal of the tumor, but this tumor has the highest recurrence. Okay. The second tumor which, I, which I'm going to be talking about is calcifying epithelial or antigenic tumor. This tumor is called, also called a spinbok tumor. It occurs in the posterior mandibular region. Radiographically, you have something called as driven snow patterns of calcification if you see this particular radiograph you can see um, the radio opaque structures which looks like driven snow okay so this this pattern is very important for this ceot and uh, histologically if you see there's something called as least gang rings these purple rings along with amyloid like substance is seen in this type of tumor so since amyloid is present uh, when you do a Congo red staining, you get apple green bifringes. Okay, so again, treatment for this tumor would be complete excision, and this tumor has a very good prognosis. The third tumor that we're going to be talking about today is adenomatoid odontogenic tumor. Um, origin for this tumor is from the glands and the odontogenic epithelium. Okay, so these type of glands are present in the heart palate, right? So when these glands along with odontogenic epithelium develop a cyst, okay, more than 65% of the time it is involving in the maxilla, okay, uh, most usually canine region, okay. Uh, the treatment for this type of cyst would be excision. All right, talking about cemento-osseous dysplasia, um, it's the most common fibrosis lesion. Um, there are three types of um, cementosis dysplasia. Okay, so the first one is focal, second one is periapical, third one is florid. Okay, so for this cementosis dysplasia, you need to remember two things: uh, whom if it affects, and what is the treatment, and what is the identification. So this focal occurs as singular lesions, occurs in the posterior mandible. You need to remember this. This affects the middle-aged Caucasian woman. Um, the teeth are all vital. Treatment would be excision. 
But when it comes to periapical, it affects the anterior mandible. It affects middle-aged African-American women, teeth vital and no treatment is needed. Okay, completely opposite. That's posterior, this is anterior, that's Caucasian and this is African-American. You need to remember because they would definitely ask you a question on this um, for part two or NBD, INBD. Okay, this is a very, very important question. Uh, this periapical cement osseous dysplasia. They will give you a radiograph and also ask the question. So, florid type also affects the mandible, also affects the African-American women, teeth are vital. So, biopsies needs to be avoided both in periapical and in florid types because when you take biopsy, they lead to osteomyelitis. So, biopsies are not to be taken in these two types. Okay, I have given this particular radiograph as an example because most commonly they give this radiograph and ask you this question. Um, this radiograph that is shown here is an example of periapical cement osseous dysplasia. It's not a periapical lesion. Okay, so they would give you a radiograph and ask you to identify it and ask you to give a treatment plan for that. No treatment is needed. You need to identify this as because there is no caries, the teeth are vital. Okay, so it's called, it's periapical cement osseous dysplasia. Next is odontoma. Odontoma occurs in children's and young adults. So there are two types of odontoma. One would be compound, another would be complex. Compound uh, odontoma has teeth-like structures, okay, which has enamel, dentin, and pulp. This type of tumor differentiates into enamel, dentin, and pulp, small, small teeth-like structures. But complex odontoma is an amorphous mass Op opaque mass okay and is usually found in the posterior mandibular region so adequate treatment would be marsupialization or enucleation uh, most important point to remember for odontoma would be gardner syndrome so in this type of syndrome you get to see uh, multiple odontomas along with large intestinal polyps particularly colon okay so they might give you a question uh, saying odontoma and then which syndrome is associated you need to remember Gardner syndrome okay last but not the least we're going to be talking about cementoblastoma this also comes under a tumor region um, so origin for this type of tumor would be uh, cementoblasts okay so this this usually occurs in second or third decades you need to differentiate this between hypercementosis or um, you know other cemental dysplasias and um, the characteristics for cementoblastoma would be it's a well circumscribed radiograph radio op opaque lesions surrounded by a radiolucent ring okay so in this always the tooth is vital but in order to remove this tumor you need to remove this tooth so ultimately you need to lose the tooth okay excision of tumor along with the teeth would be the adequate treatment for cementoblastoma so that's it. We are done for today. Um, please subscribe to my channel if you're new to get to watch my latest videos. I hope you enjoyed my orontogenic tumor video. I will meet you guys in ne next video. Until then, please take care. Bye-bye.